So I picked up this 2003 Kawasaki KX252 stroke on Facebook Marketplace for $1,400. It runs well but does need some work to make it a nice and reliable machine. My goal is to turn this into a reliable and good looking bike with as little invested as possible in order to turn a nice profit on it. The bike had a broken peg, broken lever, missing tab on the triple clamp, roached tire, damaged exhaust, and a couple other minor things. So after some assessment of the bike's needs, I submitted an order to Rocky Mountain for about $235, which will cover most of what I need. I had a set of YZ450 foot pegs lying around that actually fit this bike perfectly, so I swapped those out in order to get rid of that busted right peg. So I proceeded by removing all of the old plastics as I decided to go with the Polysport Restyle Kit to modernize the look of this bike and freshen it up a bit. I noticed the subframe is a little bit bent where the exhaust mounts, so I'm going to have to address that when I remount everything else. Thankfully, despite the air filter being pretty dirty, the air box itself was pretty clean, so I'm not too worried about the bike having ingested dirt or anything like that. So the first big issue I wanted to address was how I was going to mount the front number plate with that missing tab on the triple clamp. I came up with what I think is a pretty cool solution with a piece of aluminum. So to fix this busted triple clamp tab, I decided to tap into the triple clamp itself. And then I bought a piece of aluminum at Ace Hardware for $7.99 and drilled a couple holes in it, mounted it to the triple clamp, and then the number plate bolted up nicely. I'm curious to hear if anyone thinks that hole I drilled in the triple clamp will ruin any structural integrity, but I'm not overly concerned about it. I cut the grips off to replace them only to find that the throttle tube is broken so I will need to order one of those and the clutch cable was in serious need of replacement because it was fraying pretty badly up near the clutch lever. After lubricating and installing the new clutch cable, the clutch pull was significantly easier. That said, I'm still spoiled by hydraulic clutches these days so this still might be a two finger pull for me. The bike was missing a case saver, but I realized that might be because it's running a 15 tooth front sprocket, so I might order a smaller front sprocket for it as well. That case saver fits, but it's a very tight squeeze. I replaced the broken front brake lever and then moved on to remove the forks because the left fork has a really nasty leak, so it definitely needs new fork seals. Of course, while I'm at it, I'll do the right one as well so that the next owner can have peace of mind that the forks are ready to go. I wasn't really feeling actually doing the fork rebuild that evening, so I replaced the brake line guide and then started installing the restyle kit onto the bike. I know people tend to have mixed feelings about restyle kits. I personally like modernizing the look of these old two strokes, so let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Also, as a quick reminder, if you enjoy content like this, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I installed some frame grip tape and then I decided to fix this bend in the subframe because the rear fender would not line up properly. So I used a torch and then bent it back with a crescent wrench and it worked quite well. From there, I decided to clean up this nasty silencer using Prime MX cleaning wheels. These cleaning wheels are unbelievable. I only spent about 10 to 15 minutes on this silencer and made it look amazing. You can purchase some of these wheels for yourself by clicking the link in the description. I then torched the tip of the silencer to blue it a little bit and just give it that cool look and then mounted it back up on the bike. I got the rest of the plastics installed and then oiled up a brand new Tusk air filter with some no toil filter oil and got that installed on the bike. Decal Works sent me a seat cover and graphics for this bike so I proceeded by getting that new seat cover installed and it looks super fresh with that Cowie logo on the side and the green ribs. At this point I was still procrastinating a fork rebuild so I slapped all of the graphics on and boy is this bike looking fresh. At this point, while I was still waiting on a couple other parts, the forks were the last thing I was able to do, so I got those rebuilt with some fresh seals and oil to make sure that they'll perform better and no longer leak. I used the electrical tape method to drive the fork seals. I will link one of Greg Hitchko's videos where he demonstrates how to use that method. It is really effective and pretty easy if you do not have the appropriate sized fork seal driver, which I did not at the time of filming this and then ended up ordering one because it's like the fourth time I've needed that size. One of my big tips is when you need tools, buy them. I replaced the front tire with a Shinko 546 using my Rabaconda tire changer, which makes the job incredibly easy. This was not a brand new tire. It was lightly used, but I had replaced it with a brand new one before a race last season. So this was the perfect tire to put on this bike. I did a transmission oil change and didn't find any metal shavings or anything of concern. And I decided that I do have to fix up this header. The bike is just looking too good to leave those dents and all that rust and crust on the pipe. I bought the tool that I used to 
to expand dents on eBay for I think $60 a couple years ago. Searching now, they seem to be about 100, but you just plug both ends of the pipe and then put about 100 PSI of air and torch it and you can see the dents pop right out. I use my rough cleaning wheel from Prime MX on the bench buffer and then followed up the hard to reach places with the Dremel. I swapped to the fine cleaning wheel to finish it off, and then after seeing Cameron Niemela's recent video, I decided to blue along the welds with a torch, and it looks so good. I'm definitely going to do this when I strip exhaust from now on, and overall, this bike looks so much better with this exhaust all finished. After replacing the grips and installing a brand new throttle tube, I replaced the 15 tooth front sprocket with a 13 tooth, which should greatly help the bottom end torque. And then last, but certainly not least, as everybody has commented throughout this entire series, the bike was in dire need of a new rear tire. Someone did some serious burnouts on this thing. So I finally got around to replacing that rear tire using my Rabaconda tire changer. I gotta admit, even with the Rabaconda, I really struggle with 19 inch tires. The Rabaconda certainly makes it way easier than the way I used to do it, but still, they're so stiff and they have such a short sidewall that I do struggle a little bit. I did manage to get this one installed. I had a heck of a time getting the bead to set though. The chain was in need of a little adjustment because I swapped out that front sprocket. So with the chain adjusters, I tightened up the chain a little bit. This happened to be the last warm day in Montana for a while, so I loaded the bike up in my truck and brought it out to Raidersburg to see how she ripped, and I had an absolute blast on it. Someone's really going to enjoy owning this bike. All said and done, I ended up with a grand total of $1,747.48 into this bike. I paid $1,400 for the bike itself and then bought just shy of $350 in parts. Now watching this video, you might wonder how I did this all for $350, and I did a lot of it by reusing things I already had, such as those foot pegs and a front tire. I didn't really count things like the transmission oil and air filter oil and the cost, because those are things I buy in bulk and kind of consider just overall shop expenses. Also, I've been working with Decal Works for a really long time now, so they hooked up the graphics and seat cover, and those would have cost me about $150. Overall, I feel great about this bike. While I didn't touch the engine, it really didn't need it. It starts first kick and runs strong, and I feel good about the other things I did, such as the fork seals, tires, the case saver was missing, all the little things that contribute to this being a nicer motorcycle than it was before. I'm hoping to sell the bike for $3,000, which would put me at about $12.50 profit. In terms of labor, I think I worked on this bike for somewhere between 15 and 20 hours total. If the bike is still for sale at the time you're watching this video and you're interested in buying it, I will have the link in the description. Now I hope you guys enjoy me spinning a couple laps on this thing. If you enjoyed the video, please click that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and leave me a comment below. Someone's gonna, someone's gonna love this bike, man.
run is freaking perfect, man. Oh yeah, I feel good about this bike. Someone's gonna love this thing. Stoked to give it a nice new fresh life. Oh, wow. Yeah, things good. Things real good.